Hi everyone. Um, so my name's Liam Young. Uh, I've prepared to you for you today a a short sci-fi safari through a new project we've been developing called Planet City, which is a, a single city for the um, entire population of the Earth. Um, we thought this, this would be a nice moment uh, to finish the conference on. Um, it was born out of uh, a moment in the pandemic um, when really the dystopias of science fiction that, that would previously have read as speculative cautionary tales became the stage sets for the everyday. Um, we began to live out our lives in a disaster film playing out in real time. The idea that any aspirational distant future um, would soon be given way to the critical re-narration of an increasingly dystopian present. Um, so in that moment with the future broken, um, we thought it was a moment to start to imagine what this future um, could be again, the future becoming a project. Um, and out of that, uh, Planet City was born. So um, we're going to take you on a tour through that world um, and then maybe come back um, for a discussion at the end. Um, is it possible to, to, to play the talk? cities are fictions. Their literal edges are nebulous and their physical definition is endlessly being rewritten. But in many ways their boundaries come into focus as shared narratives. The fiction of a city can weigh as much as its physical shadow. They are lived and occupied, read and watched with consequence and meaning. I am a director and architect, and I tell stories about cities, some real and some imagined. The urban imaginary has always been a site in which to prototype new scenarios and emerging cultures. In their speculative streets, we play out multiple, unexpected, unintended futures in their associated social and political ideologies. Whether it be speculation around the impacts of industrialization and mass production, the imminent arrival of driverless cars, seamless augmented reality or artificial intelligence, these fictional worlds give form to our most wondrous technological possibilities and gravest concerns. The Ecumenopolis, or planet-wide city, has long been a narrative of science fiction. The term was coined in 1967 to describe the narrative concept of total planetary urbanization. Across the history of imaginary cities, amongst others, the worldwide city has taken on the form of the sprawl in William Gibson's trilogy, a world without trees and silent running, and Trantor, a planet entirely of architecture in Asimov's Foundation Trilogy. Today, the Ecumenopolis is no longer a fiction, however. We are all already citizens of a planetary city. Following centuries of colonization, globalization, and never-ending economic extraction, we have remade the world from the scale of the cell to the tectonic plate. Urban development has forever changed the composition of the atmosphere, the oceans, and the earth. There is no city and country anymore, no nature or technology. Instead, we have engineered a continuous urban construct that stretches across the entirety of the earth. It is an unevenly distributed megastructure that hides in plain sight. 
It wasn't master planned by a single imperial power or a cyberpunk mega corporation. It was slowly stitched together from stolen lands by planetary logistics, where landscapes have become resource fields, countries have become factory floors, the countryside has become industrialized agriculture, and the oceans have become conveyor belts. The dystopias of science fiction that previously read as speculative cautionary tales are now the stage sets for the everyday as we live out our lives in a disaster film that's playing in real time. Any aspiration or distant future has given way to the critical re-narration of the dystopian present. The future is broken and we are left stranded in the long now, staring at empty calendars doom strolling idly, waiting for the end of the end of the world. In this moment without a future, as a slow motion catastrophe envelops us at a speed that makes it uncomfortable to ignore, I want to tell a story about another planet city, a counter narrative a story about a concentrated city for the entire population of the Earth. The anti-city to the sprawl we all inhabit. This talk is a story of these two cities. Two cities the size of the planet. More than 10 billion people, more than 7,000 languages spoken, 90 million songs, 42 billion fruit trees, over 900 zettabytes of data, 90 million beehives, 6 million dentists, 148 million square kilometers of protected park, and one city. A planet city. described as my thought experiment on a world called Planet City. An imaginary city for 10 billion people, the projected global population of 2050. I believe that by creating fictional worlds, we can connect emotionally to the ideas and challenges of our future. We've been creating Planet City in response to the rising red line on the graph of climate change. But world building and storytelling can do so much more than just visualize this data. It can be about dramatizing data. In speculative cities such as this, we can immerse ourselves in the various consequences of the decisions we face today. They can be both cautionary tales or roadmaps to an aspirational future. So I invite you to imagine that we're all standing alongside the canals of Planet City. How would it feel to be one of the 10 billion people who live here? To hear the hums and crackles of flickering blue and red LEDs that illuminate the lower reaches of the city's farm fields. It smells of soil and hard drives and sweet fruit, a purple sunrise over a new kind of wild. Five years ago, seminal biologist Edward O. Wilson proposed a new world he called Half Earth, a plan to stave off mass extinction by devoting half the surface of the Earth completely to nature and consolidating human development to the other half that would remain. And this is where the speculation of Planet City begins. 
But as we started to design and visualize this radical reversal of our planetary sprawl, we soon realized that we could actually go much further. In its most provocative form, if we were to reorganize our world at the intensity of the densest cities that currently exist, then Planet City could actually occupy as little as 0.02% Earth. Could we imagine coming to a global consensus to retreat from our vast network of existing cities into this one hyperdense metropolis? What would it take? Our imaginary city would allow us to surrender the rest of the globe to nature, to return stolen lands and rewild in our wake. A new national park of the world to be visited and tended rather than engineered for extraction. The invisible lines that once divided us would fade beneath a planet of trees. And in the streets of Planet City, we can prototype some of the necessary lifestyle changes that will be required for us to continue to sustain human life on the planet. We can explore how such a new world could evolve, not in a singular forced move, but in a slow, multi-generational retreat from the world we once knew. To build Planet City, we will mine our old cities rather than virgin ground. No new resources would need to be consumed or extracted to build this future. The world shipping fleet that used to scatter matter ripped from the earth into our malls and storefronts could be reversed and repurposed to bring all that material back together again in the geological strata of the new city. And the ghosts of nation states would soon give way to the city's new neighborhoods that would be formed around shared cultural practices as we perform new myths of care, belonging, and recreation. If we were to map out all the world's festivals on a calendar, then we realized that running through Planet City would be a continuous festival procession, dancing across a 365-day loop. Each day, amongst the flittering confetti, it would intersect with another carnival or culture, endlessly cycling through new colors and costumes and cacophonies. And to design the systems of Planet City, we traveled to, researched and filmed the mega-scale renewable energy and agriculture sites that already exist around the world today. The world's largest thermal solar plant in the Mojave Desert. The illuminated indoor farms protecting crops from harsh Siberian winters. The most productive wind energy network located in Gansu, China. The world's largest algae farm in Western Australia. These monumental infrastructures are evidence that much of the technologies required to regenerate our climate are actually already here. And in Planet City, we remove the political roadblocks or the lack of cultural investment that currently holds them back, and we visualize how they could operate at global scales. Not out on an industrial periphery, but woven through the very fabric of the city itself. And so before dawn breaks, Thousands of autonomous cleaning blades will squeak along the solar fields. Waves of mirrors will ripple as they rotate to chase the changing light. A billion panels collected from all over the world. And the batteries of Planet City are alive with fish and pink algae. As excess wind and solar power pumps water through the canals to high altitude holding lakes in the city's upper floors. Power is stored here as potential energy, rather than in resource-intensive lithium batteries. And tides rise and fall as the turbines spin. So, although wildly speculative, grounding imaginary worlds such as Planet City in the real science and technology of the present moment means we can begin to project ourselves into this future. Fishing in the city's battery lakes. Following the seasons up through the towers to collect honey with the Planet City beekeepers. Falling in love amongst the pink algae blooms before harvest. 
Find the city in the end is not a proposal, however. It's a provocation, a thought experiment that shows us that we don't need to trample so hard across the earth. If we can imagine these systems working at the scale of 10 billion, then the only thing standing in our way of rewiring and consolidating our existing cities is ourselves, our own biases and blind spots, politics and prejudices. In many ways, each of us has already been living in a planetary city all along. Planet City is both entirely imaginary and already here. Simultaneously a challenging image of a possible tomorrow and an urgent illumination of the environmental questions that are facing us today. So at the end of our wanderings, our science fiction safari through this speculative city will finally return us to where we first started. To look back on our own cities again but with new eyes. This journey has been a call to actively visualize our possible futures. Imaginary worlds in which we can collectively shape where we all might want to go next. Wow. That was absolutely amazing, incredible, your imagination. I, I just, I'm just at a loss of words. It was captivating. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. And uh, we really hope to see you soon here in Munich. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it was uh, next time. Next time we'll do it in person. <laughs>